last time on Lawful Stupid. What is your name? Did we sort of how a root of us? You may call me Jakar. We're looking for someone who's got great powers, perhaps like your master. And so if we find him, we find who we're looking for, and we get out of here. Fair is fair, I suppose. <clears throat> I could take you to our territory, and then I could call my master, but I'm not taking you directly to my master. That's just out of the question. And he takes the claw, and he just points into the sky, and he drags down, almost like cutting the air itself and when he opens there's like a red glow that comes out let's go everyone first because when i go through that door closes in the distance you guys see um like a half elf walk towards you guys welcome (laughs) it's not often we have other worlders here you can call me the proprietor what are you attempting dear to get our stuff back and just put our world back in order I don't, I don't know what happened, but something's wrong. And a time lord like yourself decided to trample around other world? I'm following the traces of where our time cradle is, yes? You're brave. I love it. And if you'll remember, dear friends, you ended the last episode um, essentially telling uh, the proprietor why you were there, what you were trying to do. Um, And his last response essentially was, you're brave and I love it. Darling looks smug. (laughs) So uh, when, when Darling looks smug, does that look different from her resting face at all? I can't imagine. No, not really. Just like arms crossed, okay, like not a head. It's like she good, knocked good, that good. smug look I just off wanted to my make face, sure. But luckily for me, underneath, I was wearing an even smugger look. Smugger. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys want me to take it away? I'll take it away. Take it away, Dwayne. Take it away! Take it away! Take it away! Take it away now! now. You can't do any more. You're brave and I love it. So, how can I help you today? Well, again, we are trying to track down the brainless of Maguses, who is your immortal blood enemy since times immemorial. So if you could assist us with that, we would appreciate it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get right on it. And some of your finest fried chicken. That sounds like the colonel in my head, and I hate it. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, perhaps um, also... Fried chick- sure, I guess. The gems? Since they're all blank, I don't know. Well, I, now that you mention it, we probably got to go on some sort of mystic quest. Just like this guy put the the juice back in that crystal I bet there's one for all the other ones and we gotta go get those and then we can do stuff that's probably it right uh sure you could try that I suppose where are all your siblings right now do you have a map oh yeah I keep a I keep a very special map Uh, it's just rolled up back here and has their exact location, strengths and weaknesses. Do you have like? No, a, I don't have a map. Do you have like a room where, like, inside of it, there's like little statues of all the different colors of your siblings, and you can talk to them there. And also, if you put your hand on it and wish really hard, you can just go live where they live, and you could bring us. No, that's too. pretty cool. Start working on that. You should, get, you should get some people to start working. That's pretty cool. Maybe in two thousand plus years, I'll I'll have that. All right. I'll Maybe you. I'll put it on a collection of ships. We're gonna go step through a door that leads to a universe that works very different time wise, and we'll be back in about two thousand years. It'll be two seconds for us. <laughs> <laughs>
but you get that knocked uh, out. <laughs> right. So I will uh, spread word about the Grand Magus and uh, see if I can find him. In the interim, I'm going to need some help from you. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, there's a town nearby. Um, well, nearby is relative to the Red Roost, but from where you were. Um, and they've had disappearances at night. Um, people were just vanishing um, during the festival. And, and frankly, it needs to stop. Um, can you guys go deal with that? It, it could be something nefarious. It, it could be something magical. It could be just murder or kidnapping. Something more mundane. But, uh, it could be the Grand Magus or somebody who's working with him too. What's in it for us? I mean, or well not for us, but We're gonna why, are you, why are you invested? Why, you're an all-powerful being and is it not like a local they're doing this marshals? The near. But you, how many of you speak uh, Draconic? Me and Darling. And, yeah. Yeah. You two would know that that's the dragon word for alignment. Can you say the sentence again? Now that I have the context of that. Yeah. Um, w- these disappearances are happening during the near. And I can't have that. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. So, it's something to do with... Alignment? Lack with planets? Uh, uh, it's more... Is this like an astrology thing? Yeah, kind of. It's We look up to the stars and we appreciate the alignment of the world that we have. There's a whole festival. Uh, some towns celebrate it, some towns don't. I tend to take it very seriously. Because um, I think it's an important celebration. That sounds fun as hell. I'll take any reason, any excuse to party. Oh, it's a good party. <laughs> what well, so makes you think... It... for that. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, because it's going to be fun. But what makes you think it's part of the Grand Magus? I'm not sure entirely, but it's kind of a gut feeling, you know. It, that town, it, Stoneheart, isn't known for its popularity uh, or anything like that. It's kind of weird that people would suddenly go missing. Um, and I hadn't thought much of it uh, other than maybe just, you know, vampires or some random bullshit like that. Then you guys showed up at my door. Kind of strange circumstances. A bunch of people are missing, and then you guys show up. Well, did it, so, did it start I'm not, today? Because we've been here for like a day. <laughs> uh, it did not. The okay, so we're probably, bad, we're probably good. Yeah, yeah. I, I never thought you were um, the perpetrators. I just, your timing, more so. Whatever's happening is you guys, uh, as a result of you guys. Even if it was incidental as a result of us, I would be very bummed. But luckily, we just got here today. Well, kind of yesterday. We did sleep. Oh, yesterday. Sure. I I think we got off on the wrong foot here. I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying they lined up and now I think it's weird. I just... uh, My thing is that they don't line up. Because you said this has been going on for more than a day and we just got here. But... Right. (laughs) It's not on us. It might be on the Grand Magus because he arrived here before us. Well, oh, you're... Is that the royal... You don't lump me in with the Grand Magus. (laughs) (laughs) That's... He's been doing stuff like... Since visitors have started coming. I don't even know. Yeah, so Stoneheart. That's where I need you to be. How do we get there? I uh, we got we got options. Option one, Jakar takes you back to that fancy little portal. I'm sure he made. 
option two, I send you through a portal right now. Can we take Drakkar with us if he makes the portal? No, let him see his mother. Yeah, I'm sure he saw his mother and, and now he's ready to go out for another adventure. Is he a fighting type or what is? what are we looking at with Drakkar? What do you know about him? We know he's a troublemaker. Does he, uh, does he owe you some time out? Could you make him go as his master? No. I, I, well, yes, I could, but... Great! We need I, a guard. I, Let's you know do what? It. I just remembered you motherfuckers woke him up. Yeah, but like he was in a timeout, and so it must have not been that bad if he's like romping around seeing his mother. We address this. It's some other guy's fault for making the password open. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Still unlock the door. So uh, nothing. Yeah. So what if what if no, like, his punishment is you. he could go with us instead no. of going back into a stone, and that way he serves his time, and we have a guide. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't really blame a guy for saying the word open. What if I was talking to my sister in Draconic and I was like, hey, that that really nice restaurant that we went to last week, you think it's open right now? Then he would be like, that's not on me. You know what? Both of you make very valid points. He still can't go. All right. Okay. So I guess Portal Now makes sense. No need to wait on Drakkar. Sure. I mean, is there anything else that we want to do or see in this town? I mean, we're probably not going to come back here. Is there any? I'm a, I'm asking you, provider. Is there anything we shouldn't shouldn't miss while we're here? You only live once. <laughs> well, the Red Roost is amazing. This is, of course, my home. There's so much you could enjoy: food, uh, equipment, potions, uh, women, men, somewhere in between. Your choice, really. We've got mostly everything you could want. I mean, it sounds like. Maybe we Except spend, for Chicago, maybe we spend the night and we leave tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, or maybe not. I don't. I'm, I'm not in a. In, I don't really want to stay and do a shopping episode or anything. I just. Well, I've, I mean, I've got like 13, 14 days because the patron. Remember. Yeah, so we should rush and probably take the portal right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob. I love that. That's great. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should go right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I do. I love the internal struggle he has of, yeah, we should go, but, um, like, we're in a dragon city. Guys. Like, it sounds pretty cool here. <laughs> like, you know, listen, if we were to risk your life, this would be a reason for it, darling. I mean, it's 13 days. We could spend, I don't know, let's call it seven days here. <laughs> you know I what? That's a really good point. Let's just do an even now. I'm not saying that we like, okay, we'll give ourselves a week. We'll give ourselves seven whole day, and that if we can't do it in a week, then really we don't deserve to leave. You really need two weeks to to enjoy the red roost, honestly. Well, oh, it's not worth it if you're only here for we. Okay, we should go right now. Well, we, you we know, it's, it's, it's a watered down experience. But it's also possible they might go to Stoneheart as well. She'll look at her dragging, dragon loving brother. All right, visit the people. You might have a chance. I'm, we might come back. My point. Maybe, maybe on the way back sure. home. I, you know what? If you help Stoneheart, uh, open invitation. A, a free park hopping pass. That's right. <laughs> maybe by by the time you're back, I'll have those statues you talked about, and we can just jump between. Them. That would be very cool. All right, let's let's go cool. portal town. Okay. Uh, yeah, so these portals aren't free, 20 gold ahead. I just oh, we'll take your cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's like actually right over there. Is it, is it, will it cost you a spell slot or any sort of trouble? Because, like, we'll go. <laughs> and so, uh, he pulls a pen from his pocket and he essentially just draws a door and opens it. And he says, um, <clears throat> All right, well, good luck. I'll see you soon. Um, oh, hmm, hold on. And he pulls a gold coin with a dragon head on it. Who's the most responsible here? I take it. It's got a dragon on it. I already have it. Yeah, I'm looking so you at take it. it. I already have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so whenever you need to come back, when you're done, you get. 
tell his coin, the red roost in Tracon. And you'll go back. Make sure you're holding hands. Hey, so where are we at right now? Like what in what air like, like his house or just kinda outside or what's the setup? Uh right now you're in his chambers essentially. No No we're out No, the he gate. can't no, sorry. Uh, you're outside at yeah. He he came and met you guys. That's oh, okay. Right. Okay, we're so we're out at that kind of area that where we were like hanging so out with we're the portal that Jakar opened is directly behind us. <laughs> yes. No, it closed. No, we had to walk through the village and whatnot. Or did we? Oh. No, we're at the gate. You came yeah, to us. Yeah, we're at the gate still. We didn't walk. We waited oh, yeah, forever. You, so guys hot. So you guys saw those people going by. And it was so hot. Remember, we were sweating to death. And he went to get us some ice water, brought it back. And we were waiting. I was waiting. so sure that he came back and was like, the boss will see you now. And like we went in there. But I know. I guess the, bo- the boss did come to us. Yep. You're right. And I'm wrong. Absolutely. We're outsiders like, to the village. He just walked down and was like, there, a half elf walks towards you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, just use that coin to return. Uh, exit stage right. Exit stage right. All righty then, and I will. If you face the other way, I don't know how stage directions work. I'll go. Uh, bye. He he he's he says a more significant goodbye to Warp. Mm. I mean, I speak Draconic. What's it? What's his helmet? No, it's not. Uh, it's not like something that you don't understand or anything like that. Like you guys all get a bye. He gets a more uh, bye. I'll see you soon. Farewell, like, dear friend. I, lo- I love yeah. you. I love <laughs> you. You are my kin, and <laughs> I and I do decisions. like you. <laughs> yes. Be home by Remember midnight. that the the, the two leggeds they're not to be trusted. <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah. So you guys step back out, um, and you guys are. Um, You're off track a little bit because if you remember, Jakar like walked a bit before he could open the portal. Um, so you essentially have to go two days to the right or a day and a half to the right to get to Stoneheart to get back on track. Uh, is there anything that you guys want to cover or do on the way to Stoneheart? Real quick family and, and Aussie meeting. Mm-hmm. Let's just maybe do like a like a real quick recap because I feel like, darling, you know a lot more about what's going on than we do because <laughs> you got all this time stuff going on and you were there kind of like from the beginning of all this and like if you don't tell me some stuff, <laughs> I won't know it. <laughs> So, what I would like you guys to do, because this is just perfect, what I want is you to tee this up into Darling giving like a five, ten minute monologue of her version of the events, almost to serve as like a season one recap inside this episode. Great. I love that. Uh, And and Avon has to do it? Hooray. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) From Darling's point of view. It doesn't, so it doesn't have to be like perfect. It will be, it will have narrative bias to it, which I think is even better. Thoughts? Go for it. <laughs> I if think we all wants. need it. You want me to do a whole? I was like, are you? Ugh. Start with campaign want, one. You don't to, it doesn't. Can, right. Recap campaign one, two, three, so that everyone gets how the story's mixed together oh, into yeah. season one of campaign four, and then do what we are. <laughs> so what I would I like, just thinking, what I would like, are ahead, the different yeah. voices in Darling's head that understand timelines to start chiming in, which is all you guys and your characters from those timelines. <laughs> you just want to, you just want want Abon to improv that off the dome right this second. Yeah, though, because I don't want it. It doesn't need to be like, it's not like she would sit down and be like, all right, how do I want to tell this story? Da, da, da. She's going to do it off the cusp of whatever you ask. You should read your notes in the darling voice. And anytime that it's like <sighs> disjointed or doesn't make sense, you're like, ah, time. I doesn't make, uh, it hurts my head. <laughs> uh, well, 
you know, Dad sent us the letter. We went over to Ego's, and did some exploration, and ran into a bunch of shit. Um, lost various siblings along the way, and that wasn't great. Saw some dragon things in a temple. Lost Vera to some sort of weird creature, and Kato exploded. She'll like blink for a second, kind of like living in that memory. And then we did some wandering and God knows what. And eventually we run into Dad and go into the tunnel and pick up a bracelet because Dad wanted us to do a thing. And that had Castiel in it, and then we stuck him in soup quite often. Uh huh. You could, I don't, you could ask us why, I don't know. Uh, I think it was tasty, maybe. So then there's Tuck Tuck, and Tuck Tuck tells us many a thing, and he's actually a spy, kind of, but really just a spy because he's the very young chief of the entire of all of his people. So that's fine. And we end up in the Fey Wilds because she's just like taking her head back and forth, trying to like put all the pieces together. Not sure if she's getting it right at all. Uh. Then we go back, but we all- oh, I forgot about the rock. We got the rock in some cave. Uh, we almost lost May, but she's okay. Um, but then we get the rocks and put them in the portal. And the portal kind of does the thing because Dad wants you to explore the next end. Then we all hopped in. And... There are many doors. Time went by... Forwards, backwards. No, forwards. Forwards a lot. Dad got lost. Dad left without us. While we explored doors. Then we went back to what we think is our door, because it had the right story characters of all the people that existed in our time of... 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 Atlas. Kristoff. Rowan Findle, them, them, they also appeared in some various things. Um. Then I went to go see. Oh, Grand Magus somehow ended up here, and then. It, she's kind of like fumbling, trying to get time. Uh, but, oh, we somehow got the time cradle because we went, ran into Dad again, and then we went into the time temple and experienced things, and then I went back into the time, but everybody got lost in time, and then. Everything was gone. Paul went into a very deep sleep. And Gus left me to go back home to take care of Paul. And Dad's missing. Grand Magus is missing. The Time Cradle's missing. I go into the Time Temple again, become the Time Lord. For years and centuries, or was it seconds and minutes? Or was it yesterday? Um... But then I get all the rocks again from the portal after venturing out. And then I find you guys, because you guys are the best at dragging things and finding things. That's a very sad story. All of our family has died or has gone away or is... Poor Paul Bell. Well, well if I miss you him. think... If you think about it, there's like 236 of us last time I counted. So if you weight up all the Derringers that are having a great time versus all the Derringers that are having a really bad time, I think it's probably a net positive. Maybe someday we'll be the net positive. But I guess we're going to be the ones to save us all. Maybe. I hope so. I just want to be alive. Tell dad he keeps messing up, but that's fine. We'll turn him into a baby next time you see him. I could possibly do that. Hmm. And then we become the Derringers that take care of dad. Then we raise him to not be such a fuck. <laughs> what what a fucking conundrum that puts Osiris we'll, in. <laughs> we'll come to your we'll come to your house and we'll live in it for free. I went from loving we'll you to your changing dad. your diapers and not in the order I thought it would be. If you guys think that campaign two, what are their names? Do you think that was a cute story? 
Why do you hear the story about the grown man and the baby who were once in love? <laughs> <laughs> what races are uh, I mean, you know, that's, you know, that's official, guys. That's official, shippers. <laughs> <laughs> so, babe, sorry, baby Declan and Osiris. <laughs> I was just waiting until he turned 18. <laughs> Whoa. Again. Whoa, no. <laughs> So, I said again. Somewhere tucked yeah, up his shaking his head I, slowly. It's it's kind of like the guys who are like, oh yeah, this is my wife. It was like, she's 12 years old. Like, actually, she's a thousand year old dragon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's very legal. I'm like, and not <laughs> It's enough. very different. Sorry, what is your race, uh, Osiris? A human. Yeah. Oh yeah, never mind. That's gonna go terribly. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like an elf, you thought like maybe you could okay. just like live for another hundred years, right? Not a big deal. It's like an eighteen-year hall pass as an elf. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> just fries his own grandpa's, but I just kind of I just brought love in my head. Oh, no. Osiris and and Daddy Derringer are sweet lovers. We are not. <laughs> I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> He's been a bad boy. When I find him, I'm going to bend him over my knee and tell him, give him the old what for. I really wish you wouldn't talk not- like that about my father. <laughs> <laughs> Especially while he's a baby. Oh. Wow. Good recap, darling. Thank you. Good joke, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, thanks for showing up, Shane. You're the best. You're a catalyst to that joke. You're the best. Every RPG player knows that the scariest final boss isn't Tiamat, Vecna, or Orcus. Why? It's none other than scheduling a game! That foul beast! It's no one's fault they can't make it, Tim. So how do we get a game together that is exciting, fresh, and worth exploring? The answer is plainly... Roleplay Revolution! Roleplay Revolution allows you to generate ready-to-run adventures in minutes comes complete with NPCs, monsters, maps, and more. What a hoot! Your adventures can be highly complex for even the most intelligent, or as simple as you require. Isn't that right, Timmy? Roleplay Revolution has powerful tools that let you tweak your adventure after initial creation, so don't worry about all those last-minute great ideas that you come up with. You start by just throwing out some of your favorite themes, movies, games, etc. Just to get the juices flowing a bit. Want to mix high fantasy with your favorite RPG title? Go crazy! A mustachioed plumbing brothers in steampunk? You got it. Your imagination is the limitation. Roleplay Revolution allows you to create the game you'd love to run, but just don't have the time to write. To spice it up even more... Let's assume that Tim and your other quote-unquote friends are indisposed for a long period of time. Never fear! Roleplay Revolution has an AI-powered DM named Oracle, that's nice, that will never leave and keep its time commitments. Oracle will run the adventures you generate for you. You can run the adventures solo with Oracle or have a GM for you and your friends. It's free to try. But we, Lawful Stupid, hope you'll hear this and go for the annual subscription. If you purchase the annual subscription and use the code LAWFULSTUPID at checkout, you'll get a whopping 20% off the total price. Head on over to RoleplayRev.com and let the games begin.
All right, so you guys are in the middle of your catch-up conversation before we had a crazy tangent. Okay, well, that's a lot, but... Everything I... You have my... Special interest. <laughs> you, have, you have all the knowledge I have dragons. It is yours. You have my dragon. Yeah, I was trying to do like, you have my axe, but you have... I, I would... I was, yeah. I got you. Oh, good. Otherwise, I think I was going to run out of brothers. Or sisters. Yeah, have so many. 236 by my last count. And, I, and I'm updating. Uh, I'm crossing out the list, that, uh, the names that you've just told me. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so I just Nessa. put together how this looks with her recap. So she's been on this dangerous adventure. Multiple of her siblings have died, except Gus. Wink. He's gone to take care of May and Paul. And Paul. She's got is all to, these dead totally bodies fine. around her. And you guys are just like, yeah, no, we got you. <laughs> Add two to the list. A grip. Darling's the big bad. She's been hunting all the Derringer kids. I want I to be an only child. When I saw the whole of time. <laughs> you have to love me then. <laughs> I've seen everything that has ever been, ever will be, ever could be. And there was only one commonality. There can be only one Derringer. <laughs> Uh, 236 tails at that point Jesus it's too many <sighs> that's what the tails we th- we all the whole time we thought it was levels it's her it's her, her derringer it's kills it's her <laughs> yep <laughs> it's her derringer kill count what's your body count and she looks back at her tails huh six you set up with six people oh what are you talking about <laughs> Enjoy your conversation. Go on. All right. And, and, and we'll refocus and understanding what we need to do. I'm ready for sleep. So we go to Stone Art and we're going to find out why people are missing. And that's the favor that the proprietor needs to do for us to do what now? For him to just see if he finds a bead on, on Old Man Derringer, yeah? I thought he was going to point us in the direction of his siblings so we could get the stone juice. So he's looking for his siblings while we're out. Is that right? He just doesn't know where they are yet, and so he's doing us, doing us a favor to find he's them. Doing, he's doing, yeah, he's doing, he's doing some recon on his family. As well as the Grand Magus. And, and we've got well, 13 yeah. days to figure out this time cradle business, yeah? Or I'll be dead. You might be fine afterwards. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We don't want any more of us to die. At least where we can control it. Like, that's, maybe old age is, is the way to go. But I don't intend to see that anything happen to you. Oh, I don't think I'll ever die. At least by old age. Yeah, I imagine in this scenario, you're kind of just rewritten. Like, you never existed. So, like, I won't be able to mourn you. So I'm going to do it a little bit right now. <laughs> You are too good for this world! I'm very uncomfortable. I pretend to play the world's smallest violin between my fingers. Hold me, (laughs) Gorp! I think he's drank a bit too much of the sauce. He's been all the way here. Well, I won't. I, wife's one tear away. I won't be able to do it later. So that's that's how much I care about you. That's kind of what it would look like if I would remember you, which I won't, because you will have never existed. But I do exist. I just but from a, you, another time. You won't have wooden then. In that timeline, she was definitely dead. I'm starting to get it. I think. You'll get it tomorrow. Or yesterday. No, tomorrow. Now, whether it's in five minutes or five hours or tomorrow being five days. 
Is there any chance tomorrow's this afternoon? It could be. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> now I'm back. All right. Well, I'm going to turn in and then um, hope that we can make it bright and early in the morning. Time is of the essence, is what I'm gathering. And we want to do this quickly. Is it already nighttime and I missed it? No, I'm just turning in right now. <laughs> I like to sleep during the day. <clears throat> Have you turned into a vampire? What well, is it only? Uh, people work night shifts. You know that, right? That's what <laughs> keeps the, keep the world going. Osiris has been working nights all this week. He's been working the graveyard <laughs> shift down at the graveyard. <laughs> he's moonlighting there, you know, under the he's moonlight. He's been working the graveyard shift at a place called Stoneheart. Yeah. A lot of missing people. <laughs> the ground tastes different when graveyards. That's true. That's a little yeah, bit that's the people. acidic. Yeah, it's, it's the, the people the in people there. Taste. Change changes the the, the it nitrogen would be a good in the place soil. for you to uh, to have an archaeological dig. I'll do mm, fine. These bones seem recent. Bones everywhere. Every time Ozzy does an archaeological dig, he just puts his mouth to the raw dirt and sucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's bones in there. There's you, definitely you bones. You want a shovel? Like, this one's made by Atlas. Nope. <laughs> I don't need no sh- I don't need no shovel. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare! You need to get away from my accent. Don't you? Don't <laughs> you put your shovel near this ground? It will taint the taste. That's better. <sighs> All right. Sounds like we've got a plan. Step one: stone heart, solve problem. Step two: back to proprietor, get info, and go wherever he tells us to. Yes. Perfect. Dwayne, who are you in this scenario? <laughs> <laughs> the DM. The God. Like, right. Please, Lord, hurry up. <laughs> I keep trying. <laughs> but so, so hard. We're, really? We're walking. <laughs> Was that you trying? Uh, so you guys... <laughs> you guys the fans you love guys it. Begin to, the, the, Tell them, fans. The, the, the trek. The trek to Stoneheart. Um, excuse me like I said it's like half a day of rest and another day so when you get there it's it's dark uh cool so you approach Stoneheart which is a, a, a quaint little town known for its beautifully crafted stonework buildings uh, they have cobblestone streets that kind of wind through the town um, it's not a very big town um you can tell that there's like several families and stuff, but I, you wouldn't classify it as like it has everything. Um, so when, as you approach Stoneheart, you can kind of start seeing these like um, lights almost like dancing in the air from where you guys are. And you're approaching and you're hearing music and, and chatter and uh, almost you hear a festival. You hear the near. Um, and so you guys can hear that music and, and those lights kind of floating uh, between buildings and uh, you guys I assume you guys approach into the town without hesitation or yes. I mean I, I don't know why I would hesitate yeah sounds yeah. like they're having a good yeah. time yeah yeah so you guys you guys come into Stoneheart and the closer you get obviously the, the louder the music gets Roll me a perception check, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Oh. 22 <laughs> for Drake. 15 for Darling. Oh! Um, I passed it to 16, oh. but I rolled a 9. Which uh, is a 10. Well, he's like, it's a 16. Because of my uh, effect. that If anything below a 9 or below gives me a 10. I Perfect. rolled so a natural two. There should be a reliable talent toggle on D and D Beyond yeah. that just takes any dice roll and just lower flipped. the nine and just bumps it to ten. Mm-hmm. That would be nice. They heard you. Well, now that use it's a- of that, right? What's that? Because reliable talents like unlimited use, right? It doesn't have like yes. There's no like re- 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 you know every it's not use this a number of times yeah. equal to your dexterity modifier. Nope, it's just forever. Uh, right. And now that you've put this episode out, they will steal it because that's what they do. That'd be great. 
I wouldn't even be mad about that yeah, one. Please. <laughs> be useful. Yeah, that, take it. You can have that one. The other ones you still owe royalties on, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will collect. <laughs> yeah, so everybody, it sounds like everybody got above a 15. Um, so one thing that you guys all notice as you guys come into this fair uh, or this festival is um, there's music playing, but as you guys start walking, you don't see anybody fucking playing music. And so as you're coming through this festival, uh, there are um, all, not tents, but there's booths set up, right? There's a bunch of different booths. There's food vendors. There's games set up. There's like attractions and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people have on masks, like, um, like celebration masks, but they're, some are like dragons. Some are... Hawks. Some are just plain. Some are, you know, wildly painted. Uh, but not everybody has masks. Some have full. Some have half. Some have like the masquerade eyes. Mm. Um, you can tell that everybody's just having a good time. As we as we walk through, uh, Drake's gonna just be like nodding to anybody that we pass, just like joyous alignment to you. Merry alignment. Happy alignment. Are, are you saying alignment in common? Nope. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. I'm saying alignment in common. <laughs> the final answer. Happy alignment. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what near means. Yeah, you. I mean, you get a positive reaction from people. Nod or, or you know, uh, uh, happy near to you. This is my favorite way the stars look. I love it when they're in this order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you guys, are, you guys hear this music playing and, and these lights that are, like, dancing in the air. Um, they are, like, almost, like, uh, ghastly or... A little on the creepy side, even though they're colorful. But like when you look up, up it's kind of s- spooky looking. Um, and that, Multicolored will-o'-wisps. Yeah. They're like ghastly in origin, these lights. Um, and, and while everybody's having a good time, you can tell that everything is decorated like either to honor dragons or to honor death. Um, they're a little spooky. There's a little, like It's a spooky vibe um, in most mm. of the, the festival. Um, but th- like I said, there's a bunch of attractions. Uh, where do you guys want to, or a bunch of shops and where do you guys want to start with this town? This I want someone to too? guess my weight. I want to find out. cool masks so we blend in. I want, I want to find the, the horse races that people bet on and I want to enter on Gorp <laughs> seeming <laughs> into a horse. <laughs> Darling, can you be cool? We guess that's bad. Um, all right. So. A unicorn with a with a you know with a top on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll race it. Uh, I'm sorry, a pig, Pegasus. I keep fucking that up. Pegasus. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Osiris, there isn't somebody like guessing weight. Um, but I can tell you some of the games that you do see. If you're interested. Yes, I am. I love it. Okay. So you see, um, there's a, there's a bunch of games, but three really stand out to you. One is, um, <clears throat> like a scavenger hunt type Done. of game. Let's do it. That's it. You don't want to hear the rest? I would like to hear no, the rest right. in no. case maybe there's one I'm good at. Um, then there's one called, a th- uh, or there's one where you're like, dueling with wands and and they're like set to stun or whatever you can tell people that are playing don't die but there's a winner and a loser um and then there's uh crystal ball gazing where you can kind of like look into the crystal ball and see something about yourself or your future past that one specifically. <laughs> I feel like I, Darling's going to pick dark. that one just it's a very for targeted. Fun. Can I, I break it? I would very much like to do the wand situation. 
situation. Okay. So can you do all of them, Dwayne, one at, one at a time? As we split the party three yeah, ways. Yeah, here we go. It's our min- it's our mini up mini yeah. right here. Yeah, no, sure, we'll absolutely. we'll hold the prizes and the cotton candy and all of that stuff while one of us like goes off to do the thing. I actually <laughs> I would love to see a three panel fucking comic where it's a the person doing the event and the other two like holding candy and stuffies <laughs> and stuff. And then the next panel is the next event and the other two siblings. We're holding in a photo booth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a good that's so good. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, Osiris, we'll start with you. Um, you head to the spectral scavenger hunt. Um, and mm-hmm. so there are, uh, basically there's all these festival goers that they're lining up and they go to this, uh, this booth and they say the, the booth runner tells you that this is the spectral scavenger hunt. And what you have to do is, follow a series of clues um, throughout the town, throughout the festival and there's glowing orbs scattered around Um, and if you're able to find one of the orbs by following the um, the clues then it is possible that they're full of ancient wisdom or power and it like says that with a very grand like uh, selling point to it I would love to partake in your your hunt, please. Excellent. And he hands you the first clue. And it says, <laughs> Indraconic. In, in, in Elvish. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, and your first clue basically, um, instead of giving you a bunch of clues and having you solve a bunch of riddles, because right. that's time consuming, um, I'm going to have you roll an investigation check. Investigation is not my strong suit. Uh, I think I'm going to spend... Uh, that was a three. I want to do well. Yeah, I'm going to gonna burn a... L- well, hold on. This is... Make it- is it, is it count me like is that what I'm doing? Is doing like a it's an ability check. check. Yeah, I'm gonna spend a uh, luck point. You can spend one to roll an additional d20 and choose which one, obviously which one you use. So I'll roll a d20. Basically, it's just advantage. Yes, yeah, so it's advantage on. Yeah, much better. It says 18. Okay, great. With an 18, um, you get. Uh, there's this clue, and basically you're able to ascertain that the clue is leading you to the Apple, uh, Dunkin' for Apples event. Mm, um, and so okay. you go over there, you put your face in there, and at the bottom you can tell there's like a tightly wrapped note in a bottle, um, and you're able I bite to, it out. Yeah. You bite it out. I'm uh, bobbing for you, that thing. You pull out another clue and roll me another investigation check. Oh, well, this is so fun. Okay. Sixteen. Yeah, so with a sixteen, um, the clue leads you to the edge of town, almost on the edge of the forest. As you're approaching, you see another figure heading to where you're heading. What do you do? What, uh, is there kind of a descri- how? What do they look like? Can I see? Is it just like a silhouette? How far are they? Um, no, you can kind of see. It looks like somebody from the festival is just ahead of you. And it's just one person you're, you're saying. Yeah, there's like a person ahead of you heading towards where you're going for the clue. Uh, okay, hang on. Shoot, man, I don't... Roll a trip! Dude, I mean, I, yeah, I want to do Dash something, something or don't, right? Like, you're just moving at normal pace. It's not like you're sprinting. I would like to 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 stealth and, and like trip this this person. Use your ball bearings. Uh, yeah, sure. Roll, roll. We'll say uh, sleight of hand. See if you can trip them without them noticing that you were the problem. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, that is an 18, and actually, because it takes its 10, 25. She's what? That's a heavy modifier. Um, yeah. So uh, you you were able to move by and, and nonchalantly trip them. I mean, this is just a person, right? Like you're a fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. high level adventurer, right? Um, so you were, of course was was going to trip them. It's just whether they notice or not. So you're able to do that, and you go get to the next clue. And this this continues on. <clears throat> Roll an investigation check. No whammies. Eleven. So you uh, you're able to make it uh, through these clues, um, but you you started getting like hung up, right? Um, you have found yourself essentially in an alley behind a uh, restaurant. And you can see uh, hanging between the alleyway, um, there's like this silver silver bell just kind of ringing. But your clue basically is telling you that that silver bell is one of those orbs. Mm, Okay. On the opposite side of you is another scavenger hunt participant. And they're looking at that bell. They're looking at the staircase trying to see if they can make the jump or whatever. Um... What do you want to do? Um, so we're like equidistant from this bell that's hanging. They're above a little us. bit closer, but it's not noticeable. You know what I mean? It's not like they're it, at, ten at, yards and you're thirty. Do they know that I am looking at it? Like, is it obvious that I've? Um, yeah, you're at both it? staring up at the bell, right? Like, you both go down the alley, you see each other, see the bell. Lock eyes. Okay, well, then I will pull from my bag. I have a... Um, sorry, this is the first time I will have used this, I believe. And I, I don't remember the name of it. It is called... Bag of Tricks. <clears throat> and you guys probably know what it is, but it's got... I can pull a fuzzy object from the bag and throw it up to 20 feet. When the object lands, it transforms into a creature that I determine by rolling a D8, consulting the table. So I'm going to do that right now. Perfect. So the D8 I'm going to roll is going to be a... It's a four. So I'm going to go back to my inventory and see what that tells me from the table. Let me find that because actually in here it, it takes me just to like where all the monsters are. I'll be fine. Where oh, the four is a boar. Boar, yeah. So yeah, you throw this fuzzy object forward. It, it hits the ground, and poof, a giant boar shows up in front of him, uh, in front of the figure, and you hear the wildest of screams. Uh, as they are face to face with this boar and slowly backing out of the al- alleyway. Yeah, and then I want to like get on the boar's back and like jump up to the bell and, and grab that thing down. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, you you definitely do that, and you like leap up and jump up with a hand. You grab the bell. There's like a freeze frame. It plays a song. Don't you forget it? And then you you land. Um. <laughs> so, yeah. You you won. You won the scavenger hunt. Um, and you find... You're going to find uh, a, 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 an amulet. It's like a very s- a simple silver disc. Um, and it's got a, a silver chain. Amulet on silver chain. Uh, shape, like general shape. Of the amulet, it's like a silver disc. Yeah. Oh, disc, you said that, okay. Okay, and uh, I can tell what kind of... Uh, or is that an old character? I'm getting my characters mixed up. What kind of magic is, is coming from this thing? I can tell is that, that this character or is it the last character? No, that's not. Actually, it's my last character. <laughs> Just carry on. Dear Lord. 
Okay, cool. I have this cool thing, and I will ask probably. Do you, do you put it on? About it later. Because you asked me, uh, yeah, I do. I'm proud of this. I'm proud of the victory. Good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on and go back to that. Presumably head back and be like, hey, what's this? Uh, hold on. You put it on. So that's... Mm-hmm. You, sound, you turn your stone and slowly that disc starts to glow. And then I become the thing that the dragons yeah. live in. When they're bad that's boys. That's right. Yeah, and, and you become their vessel. <laughs> for when they're going to shove themselves inside of you. I was wondering how the statues uh, and, uh, and were made. And Osiris loves that life. He becomes a thing he's hunted for, or an artifact. Yeah. All right, just pulling up the uh, sciences. Sheet here. Did you update your sheet? Yeah, it's good. <clears throat> okay, excellent. Chaotic neutral, if that's what you're looking for. It is. I was just trying to save you from having to say it out, but that's fine. Uh, you put on this disc, uh, and it starts to glow, uh, purple. And in the center of the disc, there's like this swirling looking, uh, vortex with a jagged lightning bolt going through it. And that's the symbol that's on your amulet. Cool. And it's got a soft glow of purple. Yeah, right. you did it. Congratulations. You won. Thank you. And I'm going to head... I'm, you'll, then the, the end of that would be me like walking out with this boar uh, just kind of trotting behind me as we make our way back to the, the center. Fred? That's Fred. You've known Fred this whole time. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Does it just... Hold on. What is it? What, it, it what just, happened to me? It's alive. Like, trans... And he's bone action. It doesn't dismiss dismiss until it doesn't say when the animal gets dismissed. That's what's funny. So it never does. He's there. The creature that. vanishes. Oh, there it is. The creature vanishes at next him. dawn, or when oh, it hits zero hit points. <laughs> it's just the same soul and different creatures. I'm a fucking rat this time. <laughs> um, I like that idea actually. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that, that was your game. Next, we have Drake. And Drake wants to do the duel. Uh, so, Drake, you go up to um, this, like, long, um, like, ring, essentially. Um, there's, like, a waiting line, and then there's a ring. Um, and you can see there's two people in there dueling uh, with these wands. And, and you approach... The ethereal dueling competition um, and so yeah you can tell that they're doing um, spells and stuff like that and there's these wands that you can pick up if you choose to participate I would love to participate one thing that I am gonna do is uh, take an extra stock that I whittled from my rifle and try to crudely tape the wand onto it so I can use it as a gun Sure. Uh, yeah, so you pick up this wand, um, and you can see there's like um, like a little sheet that's like, here's how you fucking do shit. And it basically shows you like an attacking motion where you throw your hand out, and then like a swiping motion that you would use for like defense, right? Um, and then you, you go stand in line. And essentially the way it works is your line gets split into a couple different directions, so it's not like you face the person directly behind you. Um, and it's essentially King of the Hill. So the, the winner keeps fighting until um, he loses. Uh, more um, King of Tokyo. Battle for Tokyo. Single you get in there, you stay in there. Yeah, except for like, no, 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 no. More in the sense that, like, King of the Hill, like, if you win, you're there until somebody beats you. Oh, I see. So every newcomer, and the longer you can stay on the hill, the better your prize is. I got it. Because I was like, what, what, why wouldn't you just want to go last? But yeah, got it. You want time on the hill. Yeah, and people are constantly being added to the queue, right? Like, yeah, got it. Or, or to the line. So you you watch and you can kind of see people shooting you can see people like dodging and fainting and you know that the objective is to to hit your target three times 
and that if you guard successfully and perfectly, it will reflect their attack. If you do it three times in a row? No, you just have to hit them three times. Kind of like martial arts, you hit them three times in a vital spot with a spell. Okay. But then you have the blocking, and if you block perfectly, you can reflect their attack back to them. Got it. So it's just three hits, because you can dodge, you can try to defend as well. So there's a couple of different actions you have. So you watch these these fights, um, and by the time you come up, uh, you're next in line, and this person has been fighting for the last four people, knowing that the fifth one is when you get like the best prize. If you can go five, you get like to choose from the large prizes, so to speak. And so. I almost said Gus. So Drake, you you take your uh, your gun stock and your wand, and you walk into this spring. And there's like a little line for each per- person to stand on, about twenty five yards apart. And you raise your wand up, and that's where we're gonna end this episode. <laughs> I'll walk it. Uh, that leads us into the outro. And uh, Shane, you get to do the honor, the privilege uh, to do our role for humanity. And for role for humanity, we are going, we are still doing UNICEF. UNICEF. And uh, yeah, they're super cool. All the nations. They united and they said, children need emergency relief. Uh, So they got together and they said, hey, what if we did that when we trick or treat? And I love that. So we're going to roll some dice for them. Uh, And we have rolled a nine. Nine dollars going to UNICEF uh, to where the kitties need the most. So hooray. Uh, I have uh, I've been doing some reflecting. So, sorry. That's amazing. Nine's great. Last time I think we had 17, so that's amazing. Um, that said, I have done some reflecting, and I don't like the end bit. It's it's clumsy. It, it It's clanky. It, it sucks, honestly. The AI so, failed us. <laughs> yeah, we beat the, the AI. AI failed us. So I, I have chosen a different route. Every episode, I'm going to ask a would you rather question that I want you three to answer. Okay. I'm good at these. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bit. This is a skill set I have. <laughs> Me and Alex Goring used to sit around for hours and do this on his front porch. Long into the night. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Would you rather, for the rest of your life, have to speak your mind? Like, there's zero filter. Wife, boss, everyone. Like, zero filter. For the rest of your life and that's all communication too right like that's not like you can't cheap out and be like i'll write a letter and say honey i'm under a terrible curse like no any communication you have you're just super direct right <laughs> the the second option is that you you don't talk you don't share your ideas so like you can write and communicate as needed but you're not going to share your ideas, your emotions, stuff like that. Well, I'll tell you it's what. It's a double-edged sword. Neither of them are perfect. I'll tell you what, Dwayne. I'm already kind of doing the first one. Yeah. And uh, uh-huh. it's not working out super great for me. So, like, I'll do the <laughs> second one. It'd probably be a, a, a great boon for me. Well, there you go. I'll go unfiltered. Just everything. Everyone and all everything. You have a lot more trust in yourself than I do. <laughs> I don't give a shit. If I tell someone they're an asshole because they are an asshole, well, I mean it. Fuck that guy. 
<laughs> uh, Neko, it's it's that like your communication is limited, right? Like the first choice is you just say everything, and the second choice is you are heavily filtered, so you barely speak if at all, and you ne- like, hey, what do you want to eat? You want to go to the movies? He shrugged. He shrugged. Yeah. Yeah, he shrugged. Thank you. That's good audio. Uh, yeah, so. He shrugged. Uh, so we've got one in each camp. Devin, where are you sitting? Yeah, I don't really feel like sharing with you guys. So. Okay. Well, there you go. I was out. really vulnerable during mine. Thank you. No, that's mine. I would take that. option two. Yeah. There you go. I think I think there's potential for knowing what I know as a human and being uh, have, living in the military and having it. It's probably just more benefit to me. Uh, going Devin would out. would leak government secrets immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I'm a spoiler. Here's the here's the because I, I it's a double edged sword because I'm with you. I don't want to say my mind what what I say. I, I'm going to jail guaranteed. Um, it's not if it's when I'm going to say something dumb to somebody. But the second one, like you don't, you can't really teach your kids like meaningful lessons. Too much potential they to learn, hurt man. your kids. Hey. With the first one, they've got to. Um, well, yeah, I'm they're not, gonna learn to swim. Look, I, I'm all about the second one too because I don't trust my brain. But I was just thinking, like, as a part of that, like, there's times where I sit down and just talk to my kids and like tell them lessons and and life lessons, and you wouldn't be able to do that because those are all dripped in like your emotion and your personality because you don't just walk with your kids and be like don't run because i said so also love is a lie uh the world hates you like that's not how you do that right like i'll be i'll be raising your children Dwayne. it's not a concern for you (laughs) (laughs) yeah but you're still gonna act the same way so unless Uh, kayla goes brutally honest ain't nobody gonna oh everyone in the world is subjected to this simultaneously (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, there we go. That's even funnier. <laughs> I just gets real just fucking quiet <laughs> at, at like political rallies. It's just like fucking <laughs> 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 no cheering. Uh, yeah, that was a good, cool. <sighs> too hard. It's too hard. I don't like it. Yeah, do a less hard one next time, Dwayne. Be yeah, like, would hard. you rather eat cotton candy or eat a big pile of dog poop? Too hard. Yeah. Too, Too hard. hard. <laughs> what did the dog would eat? Would you rather be happy or have someone eat? pull your... <laughs> what was the dog <laughs> what, Did the dog eat cotton candy? You know, it, it'd, it'd be a toss-up. <laughs> because dog, everybody honestly. in the world is being subjected at the same time. Is dog, are dogs being subjected to it? Because if the dog's being subjected to it, he's eating sure. cotton candy. While he's pooping, I assume it's all at the same time. <laughs> it's just a giant circle. Yeah. It's a circle. Oh no. Uh well. Listen. As we always okay. say. We love you, bye. Oh my bye. fucking goodness! This is the we need to get our shit together! <laughs>